Hello friends, welcome back to my garage and today we're going to be diving into all things filmmaking for the X-T5, why I specifically picked up this camera for video to shoot alongside my X-H2S. I feel like there's not a ton of videos out there on YouTube about why someone might use the X-T5 in a video first context. So I wanted to share you guys just why I made that decision, talk you guys through some of the things that I was thinking about when I was building out a new B cam for the work I have coming up this year in hopes that it would help you if you are considering this camera and might be wondering how it would fit into your workflow. When it comes to why I wanted to upgrade, there are a few reasons. The first is that I was previously using the Fujifilm X-T3 as my primary B cam. I actually have two of them. And the issue that I've run into with this camera is the HDMI ports are quite fragile. And kind of over the years, I ended up damaging both ports just through plugging in the cable wrong or the camera falling while a cable was plugged in. And basically both the ports were damaged. So I was no longer able to have a B cam that could hook up to an external monitor. So this was a big issue as I'm shooting a lot of projects that are a two camera, three camera interview setup. And so I needed something that I was gonna be able to use with an external monitor. So I decided to look around what are the other current cameras out from Fujifilm. The next reason is that I've found myself using F-Log2 much more often in professional contexts where I'm wanting to maximize the dynamic range of the camera. I built some LUTs for F-Log2 and I've gotten very comfortable working with the files and grading it. So while I'm still shooting a lot in Rec. 709 Classic Chrome in YouTube videos like this, a lot of my professional work has switched over to an F-Log2 workflow. So I was also wanting a B camera that was gonna be able to work with F-Log2. The next was just, I was hoping to simplify the battery solution. The X-T3 takes different batteries than the X-H2S. So I was hoping that one of the new cameras would work out for me because they all take the upgraded style of battery, which is gonna be really nice. And the last main reason why I was looking to upgrade is I was doing some math and realizing that if I simply sold some of my old gear, what I was using for my previous B camera, I could actually reinvest that and pretty much have no cost out of pocket for a new B camera setup. So those are the main reasons why I was wanting to upgrade. We're now going to talk about the main criteria that I had when I was looking at the B camera options from Fujifilm. When it came to picking the X-T5, there was four main reasons that I decided to go with this camera. The first one is no record limits. Coming from the X-T3, there's a 30 minute record limit. And I was just kind of done with having to keep an eye on this during longer take interviews. And I wanted a camera that was gonna be able to not have a record limit. So the X-T5 fit that category. The next category, I needed a camera with dual recording. And so the X-T3, only records to one single slot. So I decided to look at the other Fujifilm cameras. I need a camera that's gonna be able to dual record simultaneously to two cards because I'm not leaving a corrupt file up to chance on some of the projects that I'm currently booking. There's just not room for an error like that to happen. And so I wanted something with dual recording. The next is going to be F-Log2. And so the only cameras that I was gonna be considering from Fujifilm needed to have F-Log2, so the X-T5 had that. And the last reason why I ended up picking the X-T5 was it just fits into my rig ecosystem where I can build out a very similar A and B camera rig. The camera is gonna be easily able to slide in and is a similar form factor to the other cameras that I have built out using this rig. So that's kind of ultimately why I landed on the X-T5. I'm gonna get into kind of the nuances of why I didn't go with the other cameras later in this video, but those were kind of my primary criteria why I ended up landing on this camera as my current B-cam. I am gonna take a quick break from this video and talk about this microphone that I'm using. This is the Comica VM30, and this is not a sponsored ad read. They simply sent this to me and I said that I would mention it in a video that I'm currently testing it out, but apparently it's the world's first truly wireless shotgun mic. So you guys will see there is no cable attached to this thing. There is a wireless receiver on my camera that's then running into the headphone jack. So this entire video is sort of a test of how the audio sounds on the VM30. If you guys like it, let me know. I'm probably gonna be using this in some more YouTube videos coming up as I'm interested in just trying out what wireless is like for my workflow. And the main reason I'm talking about this, I think I wanna make a distinction between gear that I'm gonna use in a professional context and gear that I'm gonna use in a YouTube video or content creation space. And so a mic like this, I will probably not use in a professional context as I prefer the wired connection, just the stability of it. I've had too many friends talk about, you know, coming back with wireless audio files that sound super corrupt and there's weird radio frequencies. When I'm doing professional work, I love 
being able to monitor my audio in real time and also have that wired connection just feels safer all around. But in creating these YouTube videos, I think there's definitely a space for some cheaper gear like this where, you know, it's convenient just to not have an extra wire I have to worry about, simply power it up and can start talking to the camera. And so I see myself continuing to use this mic in a YouTube context and even I think in a professional context, I could see myself using it as a backup. So having my wired Sennheiser MKE 600 being my primary source for audio and then maybe using the Comica VM30 as a backup as long as I can monitor it live and make sure there is no you know, weird interference happening with the microphone. So if you guys are interested, feel free to check out more about this microphone. There's probably gonna be people who do like dedicated reviews about this thing, but just wanted to give it a mention and thanks for Comica for sending it over. When it comes to all the cameras that are currently out from Fujifilm, you might be asking why I didn't go specifically with the others. So I'm just gonna talk you guys through each one kind of my thought process. So the first one is why not buy another Fujifilm X-H2S? It'll match perfectly. The main thing is that it's not a need. I don't need a second X-H2S and the price is quite a bit more than the other cameras that they have to offer. And so for me, I was looking at a camera that I could sell off my old gear and reinvest it without having to put in any additional cash. And so the extra features that the X-H2S would give me like ProRes isn't something that I'm particularly looking for in a B cam. I also did not want to make the investment into more CF Express type B cards. While I may need to do that down the road, I have a ton of SD cards that I knew if I got a camera that takes SD cards, I could do record and not have to make additional investments in both additional cards, but then an additional reader to dump footage faster. And so, and then I think I like the option of having a smaller camera body that is still really reliable, but is smaller than the Fujifilm X-H2S. So maybe in a context where I wouldn't be able to bring a large camera, being able to take the X-T5, it's much smaller, it looks you know, like a really small mirrorless kind of point and shoot style camera. I could throw a small lens, but still be able to shoot with 6.2K, shoot an F-Log2, and even get IBIS in such a small camera. So that's kind of the main reason I didn't go with the X-H2S. That leads me into the X-H2. So why didn't I consider the X-H2? I looked it up and I think the main thing I feel about the X-H2 is it is a photo first camera. They're advertising things like 8K um, and kind of the megapixel count for photos. I think I was not seeing myself needing 8K when it comes to video. And again, the body is the same size as the X-H2S. So was also you know, impressed that the X-T5 had a smaller body with the same sensor and again, CF Express Type B investments was not wanting to dive as much into that. And comparing these two, it just simply costed more than the X-T5. And I felt like what the X-T5 was giving me was everything I needed and not anymore. The only other camera from Fuji that I was considering that met most of my criteria was the XS20. And it is an amazing little camera from what I've seen of friends owning it. It is really solid. The only thing it lacked for me is dual recording. I love how small it is. It would have fit into my ecosystem perfectly, but the fact that I cannot do record simultaneously to two cards was the ultimate deal breaker for me. Having that in the X-T5 is more important than having the full-size HDMI port at the end of the day because I have that reliability that my footage is going to be safe. So ultimately, that's kind of why I chose the X-T5 over some of the different cameras on the market. You might have different needs and you might want an X-H2 if you're doing more photo and video work. Maybe it's your photo first camera and the X-H2 is your you know, primary video camera. But for me, primarily doing video, love that the body style was very similar to the X-T3 and felt like a no brainer upgrade to me. When it comes to my first impressions of the X-T5, so far I am really loving it and I'm super happy with my purchase. Feels like it just gave me all the features that I was looking for in a little bit of an upgraded body. And so overall, I'm really liking it. I think the main things, I love the still versus movie mode switch versus on the X-T3, you had to use the dial on the left and switch between all the different photo modes and video. On the X-T5 just simply gives you, do you wanna be in video mode or photo mode? So for me, it's always in video mode and I'm not accidentally flipping that switch. The next thing is just the way the custom modes integrate on this camera, I love a lot more than the X-H2S. The X-H2S uses the top dial to switch through the eight different custom modes 
And so the X-T5 actually does not have that dial on the top, but they still give you access to the custom modes. And I found this just be a way easier workflow where I can put it in the quick menu and quickly switch between by different modes if I'm wanting to film 24 frames, 60 frames, F-Log2 versus Rec. 709. I'm gonna get into all of that in a best settings video that's gonna be coming up very soon. If you guys are interested in my favorite settings for the X-T5 for video, just be on the lookout for that. And I think overall it is the near perfect B cam. I'm currently working on refining my kind of B camera rig that I'm gonna be showing you guys soon of how I built a rig for the X-T5 and still gave clearance for the flip screen where that wasn't covered up. So stay tuned for that. And I think in the process of making that, my one gripe with this camera that I know I was signing up for is just it still has the micro HDMI port, which I have broken on two other cameras, and I'm just doing my best to be a lot more careful and figuring out how to rig my camera more safely. So I'm gonna dive into this in the rig video, but there was a clamp that is sold with the X-T5 cage from Small Rig that I have been testing out, and it actually gives you the ability to lock your cable into the port, it takes the stress off of the port and the cable so that even if it's bumped or nudged, it hopefully protects your port. So I'm definitely taking precautions with that being my one kind of gripe or a con with this camera. And I'm excited to see how it works for my needs. So hope that this video was helpful to you. If you guys have any questions about you know, anything about the X-T5, the next several videos on my channel are gonna be kind of diving more into best settings, best practices, how I'm using this, how I built my rig. So let me know any questions down below and I will see you in the next one. Peace.